Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I am a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, 11 a.m. in Australia and 1 a.m. in the UK. So it's just a reminder for you guys in the UK, it's back to the normal time for you because you have started Daylight Savings. So it's always going to be 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. That will never change because I work on U.S. Daylight Savings time. Uh, it will change for guys watching in Australia when we finish Daylight Savings, but that's next month. And it's gone back to the normal time of 1 a.m. start time for you guys in the U.K. because you started Daylight Savings. So we've been working on an Art Deco building interior and exterior that I want to um, bring into the new Unreal Engine 4.15.1 they did an update uh, recently uh, I originally created the building in the UDK uh, in 2011 this is just for the benefit of anyone new that may not know what I'm working on I'm just going to fast forward past some concepts up So this is the building that I created in UDK in 2011. Um, we're going to be recreating this in the new Unreal Engine because uh, I'm interested to see the differences in uh, the lighting from UDK to the new Unreal. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm updating all of these assets for the new version. So increasing the polygon counts on some, changing the textures on others. And we're going to recreate this building in the new version of the Unreal Engine. Uh, just a bit of background on me. Uh, I'm an I work in architectural visualization now. Um, I've worked for game studios in the past um, as an environment artist and a technical artist. Um, but currently I'm in architectural visualization. So that should be enough of that. What we're going to be doing is um, jumping into Mac. Thank you, Dark Venom. Again, this, this version was done six years ago in 2011 in the UDK of Unreal. I'm recreating this building now for the new version of the Unreal Engine 4. So I want to see, I want to check the changes in the lighting and see how it's been improved. So what we're doing at the moment though is we're updating the assets in 3D Studio Max. Um, we're texturing them up in Substance Painter at the moment. I may, I'll probably use uh, Mari by the Foundry to do some of my texture work as well. I prefer Mari to Substance Painter. Um, so yeah, at the moment we're doing just, just updating the assets to make them look a bit more high poly, change some of the textures on some of them because I don't like the textures I've used on some of these assets. And we're going to recreate this building in Unreal Engine 4. So that's what we're working on now. That's the project we're currently working on. I finished doing the um, Baroque Garden Terrace. That was when I first started streaming, that was the first project I did. So the next one is this Art Deco building that we're going to be taking into Unreal once we have um, finished updating all of our assets here. Now, as you can see, what I've done here is I've lined up all of my assets for inside of the building in a row. Um, like I said, I've worked for game studios in the past, and this is generally the way um, artists will work. They'll make sure that they have all of their assets visible. This way they don't accidentally forget something that they may need. A name 277? No, no, the texture is, uh, Nano 277 is asking whether the texture is 4K resolution in the uh, UDK version you just saw. No, they weren't. They were, um, the average texture size was probably about 1024, maybe 2048. Um, we're probably going to be sticking to 2048 textures for the rebuild for the new engine. Uh, some of them may be 4K for the new engine though because graphics cards have gotten a lot better since from six years ago when I made that UDK version and um, so graphics cards have more memory, they have a lot more powerful, PCs are more powerful too, games consoles have 8 gigabytes of memory now so like the PS4 and the uh, Xbox One so we can afford to go a bit higher resolution so no the original textures were about 1024 or 2048 uh, the remade textures we're going to be probably doing in 2048 or 4096 4K. Um, just depending on what the object is in the scene. So for example, this building here that you're seeing, that's the inside of the building. Uh, that's using uh, 2048 textures. So 2K textures, not 4K textures. 
but it is broken up into a front and a side. And I'm going to be redoing the roof. We'll do that. We'll take all that at some stage during this project because I don't like this texture. It's pretty, pretty bad. Some of these assets, like I said, I created them back in 2011 and they really need to be updated. Some of them texturing on them is not good. We have started doing that though. I brought a few of them into the Unreal Engine that we've finished working on. So we, um, we're working on these air intakes, which uh, go on the side of the building. They just circulate air between the uh, brick on the outside and the inside wall. And I created three versions of those, a cleaner version, a uh, mid version, and a really dirty version, like this one, a really worn version. We also did our uh, sconce lights. And they're just using an emissive map. And what I'll end up doing here is putting two light sources, one at the front to um, reflect light that way, and one at the back to reflect light up the wall. And again, just using an emissive map here to give the illusion of a light. Uh, what else do we have here? We have our Art Deco doors that you saw in the level, and they're broken into two halves so that we can open them inside the, uh, the engine when we're creating our building. So they're just the two halves of that door there. We uh, did our ironwork, which is that decorative ironwork you saw as at the beginning of the building where it starts to fly through. So we redid those in Substance Painter. I'm just uh, retexturing them because I didn't like the original texture. I wanted to add a bit more gold to make it look a bit more interesting. So we have the top piece and we have the, uh, the, the actual gates, which we're going to be instancing inside the engine so that we can cut down on our texture and polygon count a bit. Uh, Nano is asking, is Mari harder to use than Substance, by the way? Uh, I really like Substance, but a lot of my friends are also using Mari, so I'm going to take a look at this software soon. Mari is different to Substance. Now, just to explain the difference between the two programs. Substance Painter is more of a physically based uh, texturing program. And by physically based, you know, I mean things like it uses um, textures that are built on actual real world values like brass and brass pure, these type of things. Uh, Mari, while it's physically based now, because that's a, a new option they added recently, is more for actually painting your textures on your model, which is what I like to do because I, I like the more of the art, art style of uh, texturing work where I actually paint my details in and I paint my dirt and that sort of thing in. A lot of guys that use Substance Painter Everyone uses these physically based materials because that's the way the program works. Um, but a lot of guys that use Substance Painter like to use generators to do their edge wearing and that type of thing. And what I find is that makes, starts to make every model that every artist release look the same. It all uses the same white car paint, blue car paint, red car paint. They all uh, use a curvature map to create a, a, a to add a generator to do the uh, edge wearing, so it all ends up looking the same because it's all procedurally based. Whereas Mari works more with bitmaps that you actually paint in by hand, so you can get more of a unique look to your model, and that's why I like to use Mari. That is the fact too that Substance Painter, you're limited to 8K texture sizes at the maximum, uh, whereas Mari, you can go 64K or larger, it's, there's no limit. Mari was actually created more for cinema work, and in cinema, which I've worked in too, by the way, uh, in cinema work, you're generally working with very large textures, compared to games anyway. Um, their texture sizes are usually quite high because uh, anything that you're viewing on a big screen like the cinema, you have to make sure that uh, your textures look good, and the best way to do that is to make sure that they're at a really high resolution. Because you're going to notice something wrong on a cinema screen more than you will on a tiny monitor or TV screen. So um, that's one of the reasons uh, I use Mari. I got used to using it when I was doing some uh, film work, and I just continue using it now in most of my work and architectural visualization as well. Because yeah, I really like the texture sizes. The interface is different. Um, I'll go through it when I work with Mari. Uh, the guys that have are my regulars that have watched my channel and saw me using Mari when I made the um, the garden terrace. Let me just pull up my website here. Um, saw me working in Mari, and when I work, I, I, I tend I try to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So it's more of a tutorial Twitch stream than just me sitting here working on my stuff. Does that make sense? Uh, Nano, uh, were you working when you did work on, where, where was I working? Uh, 
couple of different places. Um, I actually worked for a studio that did work for Warner Brothers and a Fox studio. I don't do that now though, I'm in architectural visualization now, so I do, um, my specialization at the moment is uh, photogrammetry. So, and again, photogrammetry basically is taking photographs of an object and recreating that object based on those photographs. Um, so you make a 3D model based on the photographs or you do laser scanning. Um, that's basically what I do a lot of now because the company I work for now does a lot of heritage work. So say you have a heritage building and you want to build an extension onto the back of that building. We photogrammetry, use photogrammetry to recreate the facade and then uh, we build the extension on the back which is generally more modern than the front of the building. So the photogrammetry is used to recreate the uh, heritage front and then that's, we take that into CAD programs and Max to uh, add the extension on the back. That's what I do now. I don't, uh, I still do contract work for a game studio as well uh, here in the city that I live in. But um, yeah, and I've worked for games companies in the past as well. Uh, if you want to find out a bit more about me and what I do and what I've done, go to my website, phildoes3d.com. And uh, you can read up about me here and look at some of my previous work if, uh, if you're interested. So phildoes3d.com. Find out a bit about me here. See some of the publications I've been in. Um, that type of thing. You can also check out some of my previous work here as well. This is just a small selection of my work though. Uh, I just put a few up. I've actually got to update this because some of these uh, I wanted to swap out for something new. Oh, you followed me on Twitter? Cool. Oh, and you followed my Twitch page, uh, Twitch channel too. Thank you guys. I really do appreciate it when you follow me on Twitch. Good, start. Good of you. And thank you for popping in the chat too. Because like I said, guys, if you've got any questions while I'm working on, while I'm working, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Uh, it doesn't have to be about what I'm working on. It can be about anything regarding 3D. Like I, I've worked in 3D for more than 10 years. Um, I use 3D Studio Max, but that doesn't mean that I think that's the best program or the only program. All 3D software nowadays is um, more than capable of getting the job done. Blender is a free piece of 3D software that you can download and use, and I encourage you guys to do 3D. That's one of the reasons I'm on Twitch. I'm not on Twitch just to work on my own stuff. I'm here to encourage you guys to do 3D yourself. Um, it's something I love doing, and I know that you guys would love doing it too, so download a free 3D program like Blender and play around with it. And even if you think you're no good at it, you're not going to get better at it unless you practice and try. And um, you can make some stuff that you won't see anywhere else. And, and you'll have the satisfaction of knowing you made it yourself. This bridge is a good example. It doesn't exist anywhere. It's not a real bridge. It's not even a real setting. All this uh, environment was created in Eon View. And again, the guys that were watching me when I was doing my um, garden terrace saw me working in Eon View and creating an environment for that. Let's uh, let's just jump into that folder because I noticed that there are a couple of new new guys around. I want to show you the last project we worked on on Twitch. Uh, you're a student, Nano. And you started using Maya, yep. Uh, you finished a project recently. I certainly do. Just um, don't don't post the link just yet. I've got to add you as a regular in, um, otherwise Nightbot will time you out. So just wait a minute until I um, until I do that. I'll tell you when it's when you're good to go, but don't do it just yet. Just wait a minute. I'll just do that right now. Regular. So just, just wait a second and I'll tell you when you can close. Check that. You should be good to post a link now, Nana, if you want to. And yes, I'm, I'm more than happy to look at the, the work that you guys are doing. Again, I, I love to look at the work that you do and I'm happy to look at anything. Um, so please feel free to post a link in chat, Nano. You can do that now. You should not be um, timed out by 
uh, Nightbot. But do make sure, guys, if you do want to show me some work and you want to post a link, that you uh, tell me first. Otherwise, no, Nightbot will time you out. Okay, let's have a look here. Just checking it out now, Nano. So yeah, like I said, guys, feel free to pop into chat and post a link. Uh, I love looking at your work. So this is um, oh, yeah, yeah, speed bike. Okay. Very nice. Do you use substance for this to do the texturing work, Nano? Texturing is very nice. Um, it looks like substance to me. I, I could be wrong. I'm just guessing. Uh, again, yeah. Is it substance? Substance painter that you use to, to texture it up? So, very nice work though. Nice texturing work. I'm trying to work out where this bluey purple color is coming from. Is that in the texture or is that a light source? It looks like it may be in the texture. Uh, yep, Substance Painter. Edgeware is uh, BAE. Okay. Now again, well, Substance was created to to texture up models. <coughs> pardon me. Models like this, uh, hard surface models where there's a lot of metal. Uh, Substance does that very well. Um, again, though, like I say, I, I find with Substance Painter. It, a lot of models start to look the same. Not that, not, I'm not saying this does look like every other model. Don't get me wrong, please. Um, but I, when I when I work with Mari, I can actually go in here and say uh, paint more damage, get the texture to look exactly the way I want to, as opposed to um, using a procedural texture. Hey, Sniper Echo, good to see you. And again, guys, uh, let me apologise for not being able to stream on Wednesday last week. My internet went down and didn't come back until Saturday, so it took my service provider, it was actually my phone service, took them that long to fix the uh, internet up, so these things happen. So yeah, I wanted to stream, I was ready to stream, but uh, in the morning prior to me starting my stream, my internet died. <laughs> As like you guys know, if you keep an eye on my Twitter page, if anything like that happens, you'll, you'll know about it, because I always post. I always post before 15 minutes before I start streaming to my Twitter page as well if you just need a reminder as to when I'm going live. But my schedule does not change. I always stream on a Monday, a Tuesday and a Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, barring any unforeseen uh, problems like my internet going down or Twitch having problems. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on my Twitter page at does 3 d if you're not sure. So again, sorry about last week, guys. Um, wasn't my fault. I would have loved to have streamed, but I couldn't. But again, getting back to Nano's uh, piece here, very nice, <clears throat> pardon me, very nice texturing work, really nice. Do you have any other images? Oh good, here we go, some nice close-ups. Yes, I see your edge wearing here. Um, yeah, no, texturing is nice, very nice work. Did you use material IDs to change your um, materials out here, Nano? Like I noticed you're using different substances for different parts of the model. I'm just I'm curious as to how people are using substance paint up, whether they're using uh, material IDs to do that, which is the way I generally do it, or doing it by hand or breaking the model into pieces. <laughs> yeah, I, you know Sniper Echo. Sniper Echo has been a regular of mine for, for, since the beginning, actually, when I first started streaming. Um, uh, and you know about my Twitter page, so he, he knows if, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not online, check out my Twitter to find out why. Uh, okay, Sniper Echo has posted a link. I'll, I'll look at that in just a second, Sniper Echo. I just want to keep checking out this model by Nano. Um, yeah, that, very nice texturing work, dude. Really nice. I, I like the detailing in the model as well. You've got some really nice soft edges happening, which is important. Like I say to you guys all the time, make sure if you're modeling that you uh, soften up those edges because it's, it's important to make your model look good because there's never really a hard edge in anything. It's always a soft, uh, a soft edge. Uh, and then it says, yeah, he was too lazy first, so he duplicated the texture. He did it again. Uh, I did it again, so it's looking really different. 
Yeah, well, I'm a hard surface modeler as well, Nano, so I know what you mean. I love hard surface modeling. I don't do character work. Uh, I don't do animation, <laughs> just in case anyone's wondering and going to ask. I'm not a character artist. I'm not an animator. I'm a, a 3D artist. Uh, I specialised in, in... When I worked in games, I was an environment artist and also a uh, technical artist. I'm, I'm a technical artist because I have a programming background. When I went to university, I studied design and I also studied programming, which gave me the best of both worlds. So in technical art in general, you need to have you need to know programming because they want you to um, develop tools to uh, improve their workflow. And that's part of being a technical artist. So you need to know a bit of programming for that. Um, I'm a visualization artist now, though, in, in architectural visualization. So. Uh, do I have any advice on getting the best topology? What do you mean by the best topology? Are you saying you want the lowest topology, the lowest number of polygons on your on your topology, or how to do topology, or just be a bit, bit more specific? Now, I'm not sure what what what, what what you mean. How to get the best topology? Um, again, working in a 3D program, make sure you're always working in Edit Poly. You always work in Poly mode. Uh, Again, remember guys, so when you export your models to, if you're doing game stuff, uh, it's going to be triangulated then anyway. It's going to be converted to an edit mesh because that's what graphics cards and PCs and consoles use. They work on triangles. They don't work on polygons. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm not, not sure if you mean retopology or just to get the best topology, what, what you mean as far as polygon count goes or, or what. But generally, make sure you're working quads. As long as you're working in quads, you're going to get a clean-looking mesh. Uh, and if you're not doing anything regarding games, you don't particularly have to worry about your polygon count, really. And then it says, I think around tips, placing the edge loops, uh, the stars, placing enough loops. Oh, okay. Um, with hard surface modeling, that's not really a concern. And again, it's only a concern if you're doing it for games models, because they, there you're a bit more restricted with your polygon count. Uh, it's very important if you're doing character work, if you're doing up characters, edge loops then become much more important because, and the reason that they're important is because they have to be placed correctly, particularly on places like your face or a character's face to get the animation to uh, perform properly. But if, if your edge loops are out on a character, then it's not going to animate properly it's going to make an animator life a living nightmare and I know this because even though I'm not an animator I know people in animation a lot of my friends are animators so that's where edge loops become critically important uh, as far as topology goes it's mainly character work hard surface modeling it's less important particularly if you're doing it for rendering in a third-party engine like V-Ray or Mental Ray or Arnold any of those type of renderers you're not really worrying about your poly count uh, so edge loops and that type of things are less important. Um, it's only more important when it comes to creating hard surface models for games because you don't want to increase your polygon count too much and that's where you have to be a bit more careful as how many edge loops you place and where you place them and that type of thing. Um, and generally you can get around that by using normal maps anyway or softening up edges, so hard edges. So uh, my, if you're a hard surface model and nano, I wouldn't... Um, be too concerned with your edge loops so long as you're not doing something really silly with them. Um, for instance, if you're if you're softening up the edges of your model like you have here, say say through here, um, it, and again it depends on the 3D program you're using. But I know in Max to do a soft edge like that, I'd really only need uh, one, two, maybe four edge loops for that curve. Uh, you can get away with doing three if you're doing game modeling, which the guys have seen me do when I've been working in Max. Because you can then just throw a smoothing group on that edge to soften it up, even though the edge may be stair-stepped like that because it's only three edge loops. Uh, throwing a smoothing group on it will make it appear around. So, uh, But again, if you're doing rendering work outside of games, that's really not an issue. You, you could put 20 edge loops around there and it wouldn't matter. but. You're going to bog down your machine for no reason, though, still. So, you know. Less important for hard surface models, vitally important for character models. Um, and again, I'm not a character artist, so... Yeah, probably best if you're, if you're doing character work and you're worrying about edge loops, ask a character artist. 
uh, and same with animation. But hard surfaces, I, I wouldn't get too worried about your edge loops really, so long as you're not being nuts and yeah, you can generally not worry about it quite so much. Uh, but the model texturing is looking very nice. I think you've got a top view here, okay. And the um, and a good occlusion render, good. I like to see these occlusion renders too because it really helps to show the um, geometry of the model. And you've put some nice detailing into this model. It's really nice work, really nice. And um, you said you're a student, I think, and you're using Maya. Well, you're doing very nice work. And again, Maya is used in game studios quite a bit. Uh, animators like Maya because they have very good animation tools in Maya. Uh, studios will use 3D Studio Max as well because the last studio I worked at, Game Studio, was using Max. Uh, the current studio, ArchViz Studio, uses Max. So both of them are used quite a bit. And that's very nice. Like I said, I like the detail work you put into the model. And the texturing work is also very nice. Yeah, no, really nice work. Nice work. Remember too, guys, if you're, um, you, because uh, Nano was asking me about using Mari and using Substance Painter. You're not limited to one or the other, depending on your finances, I guess. But do remember that Mari, uh, they did give away a free version that you can use for non-commercial purposes. So if you're a student, in, in Nano's case, they give away a, uh, a version that uh, is fully functional. You can you can use uh, Mari and download it from their website at the Foundry. Uh, Nano says he's a second year artifacts in France. Okay. Your current goal is to be a hard surface modeler in CG uh, visual effects. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. A again, that's uh, what I was doing to film. In film, I was hard surface. Um, and I was environment in um, games as well as technical artists. Because I like to do an overall environment as well. I like, and that's why I use Eon View. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but again, they give away a free version, a personal learning edition that you can download and use if you're a student. Um, I, this is nice work, so well done. Um, and thank you for showing it to me and for everybody on the stream. Uh, I, I do like looking at your guys' work, so please feel free to pop into chat and um, show it. Sniper Echo, let's see. Uh, Sniper Echo says, first render of a desolate terrain in UE4. Okay, let's have a look. So yes, uh, thank you Nano for showing that, and it is very nice work, you've done nice texturing work. And this is uh, Sniper Echo, or Sniper Ghost as he goes by on Twitter. Oh, this is very nice Sniper Echo, again very nice work. And you're using UE4 to do this, you said. So it's the first render of the Desolate Terrain in Unreal Engine 4. Really nice. I really like the uh, in the uh, the skybox. So it's looking great. The cloud cover is great, and the uh, texturing is very nice as well. Is this a, an Unreal Terrain, or is this a, a mesh? I'm going to jump out and say, "What you're using an Unreal Terrain for this? Did you use a height map or something like that, or did you sculpt it by hand?" Because it's looking really nice, Sniper Echo, really nice. And like I said, I, I really like what you've done with the uh, with the uh, sky, the cloud cover here, it looks great. And the texturing work is very nice as well. Um, I'm still deciding whether I'm going to put a terrain into the uh, Art Deco building that I'm working on. Now Sniper Echo says it's early stage, the terrain was edited in Blender, okay. So it's a uh, mesh terrain, I'm assuming, which is cool. <laughs> you can do terrains in Unreal either way. You can either use the uh, Unreal Engine terrain editor or you can use a mesh, as Sniper Echo has here from Blender. Um, I'm still deciding whether I'm going to put a terrain in the, when I rebuild that Art Deco building, whether I'll put it on a terrain. I may, just to make it a bit more complete and actually add some trees and grass and that type of thing. Uh, Sniper Echo says it needs more detail and higher resolution textures. What uh, resolution of the textures? They don't look too bad to me, in this picture anyway. But um, they're looking great. Did you do your tech? Are you using substance textures? 
it's a mess, yeah. I thought it, okay. Um, and, and that's a valid way to do it too. You don't have to uh, use uh, Unreal's Terrain Editor, you can use a mesh. Remember too, View is very good for that. You can um, either use a mesh, you can sculpt up a terrain in Eon View and uh, export it out as a mesh, which you can then take into Unreal. Or you can uh, save out a height map from um, from View and then use that in Unreal on one of the using Unreal's Terrain Editor. Sniper Echo says you found that UE4 terrain tools don't give you enough control. Yeah, they're pretty basic. I have to admit they are pretty basic. Uh, and Sniper Echo says these textures are 2K. Okay, cool. You can get away with 2K textures. I'm assuming Sniper Echo means he's textured up the entire uh, terrain piece as a 2K texture, which again is a very valid way to do it. What I'm thinking of doing though is for the uh, Art Deco building is perhaps putting it on a terrain and if I do that I'll show you guys a way to use Eon View to render out a height map. We'll take that height map into the Unreal Engine, use Unreal's terrain editor to sculpt our terrain. We're actually going to sculpt it in View and we're going to use that height map to get the Unreal Engine to recreate the uh, terrain using their editor, using their engine. Uh, and then we'll probably end up texturing it in Unreal using Substance textures. Because the advantage of us using a Substance texture is we don't have, we're not limited particularly to um, the texture size. We can mix and match and, uh, and um, UV map tile the texture quite a bit. Oh, Sniper Echo says he does, he didn't use Substance, just blended some textures in UE4. Oh, okay, yep, cool. Which is what we'll, if I do the terrain in Unreal, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to blend the textures. Uh, we'll take a height map from View into Unreal and recreate the terrain using Unreal's terrain editor, using the height map. And then we'll create a multi-material uh, that we can then um, paint on in Unreal. Yeah, well that's just it. Eon View was made for environment renders. That's the whole reason the program was created. It's created so you can create mountain ranges, fields, uh, rivers, all that type of thing. So the terrain tools are really good. And there's no reason you can't use Unreal as well as, uh, <laughs> sorry, you can't use View as well as Unreal. So use View because of all its great terrain tools to create your terrain. Uh, export that out either as a mesh if you want or as a height map and then use Unreal's built-in terrain to recreate that terrain uh, using the Unreal Engine's tool uh, editor. The advantage of course with using um, Unreal's terrain as opposed to a mesh is uh, the engine can handle that a little bit better than it can handle a mesh as a, as a terrain. It handles meshes fine, but using a, an act the actual terrain editor in Unreal will allow you to use very large terrains without consuming a lot of memory on your graphics card. Sniperico is asking me if the render looks a bit dark. Uh, no, I don't think so. You've got a very overcast sky, so you're going to get a dark terrain anyway. Uh, I, I see you've got some type of um, glow happening here. I'm, I'm assuming, without seeing this in motion, that you're trying to stimulate maybe some light coming down from this open section of the sky. Maybe. Um, but no, I don't think it looks too dark, Sniper Echo. Considering the cloud cover, no, I don't think it looks too dark. I think it looks fine. It's very nice, actually. R really nice work. And again, we'll, we'll cover all of that when I jump into Unreal and um, if I decide to put a terrain underneath of that Art Deco building, we'll look at all that then. Because it, it is an interesting... Um, difference between using a mesh as Sniper Echo has done here and actually using Unreal's built-in terrain editor. Not to sculpt the terrain, I would never say, because as Sniper Echo says, sculpting in Unreal is um, pretty basic. But um, use uh, Eon View to create your terrain and then use that in Unreal. Yeah, that's what he was going for. I thought so. He's, uh, I'm assuming he's talking about this uh, light source here. This gets a bit hard sometimes because Remember guys, I'm 30 seconds, you're, you're going to see me 30 seconds after you type into chat getting my response to you because there's a delay of about anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds depending on Twitch. Um, 
which can make it a, a, a interesting to chat sometimes. But no, I don't think it looks too dark, Sniper Echo. I think it looks fine. Because like I said, you've got a very dark sky. So you're not going to be getting a lot of light being thrown uh, around anyway. And you not you don't have any really dark shadows happening, so I don't see a problem. I think it looks fine. It looks very good. I really, really like the sky. I like it all. But uh, I think you've done a great job. I like the uh, colour palette as well, actually. Yeah, it's very nice. Good stuff. Um, and again, we'll get into uh, in, into terrains when I jump into the Unreal Engine if I decide to put a um, a terrain under that Art Deco building. Is there anything I would change? Um, Not off the top of my head. Uh, there's nothing that jumps out to me, at me as being a problem. Um, maybe just the colour here. That that light beam you've got going on. I mean, it, still, it's fine. I, I don't have really have a problem with anything. The, the image is looking great. If I was to pick something and I had to pick something, I would say maybe the light beam is a bit too orange. Um, I'm assuming the time of day, yeah, it's hard to say, but the sun is not either setting or rising, so maybe the light colour is a bit orange. That's the only thing I would maybe, if I, if I had to pick something, I would, I would say. Uh, but I, I think the image looks fine. You want me to be tough on you? Okay. The, the light colour, the orange colour here is a, a little bit too orange. Um, now, so putting uh, 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 primary colours against each other, uh, an orange and a green, always does look nice. It can look nice. Um, but yeah, I just think, depending on the time of day that you're going for in the scene, but maybe that's a bit too orange. Just a bit. Just a bit too orange. Uh, like I said, I don't see any dark shadows, so that's a good. That's good. Because remember, guys, even on a completely overcast day, um, or even a brightly lit day with the sun shining directly down, you're never going to get a really dark shadow. You're always going to have... It's never going to be black shadow, put it that way. There's always going to be some light, um, but I don't see that problem here. And again, you're not really getting shadows because it's such an overcast uh, skybox. Um, no, I like the texture you're using here for the rock, and I like the texture you're using for the dirt. Um, I don't know how many materials you've blended here. Uh, if I had to say anything else, then I would say maybe choose another dirt that's uh, a darker brown. Not, not, not to replace this one, to mix with this one. This dirt texture looks great. Um, just if you wanted to give the, uh, the dirt a little bit more interest, just uh, maybe a, a, just a copy of the, of the texture you're using, but with just a bit darker and just to blend it in here and there. So keep the dirt, just add a third texture that's a, a darker version of the dirt that you can just blend in in spots here and there. But that's really not necessary either. Like the image looks great. You want to be to be you want to be hard though. So yeah, my, my main concern would be the colour of, of the light. It's just a bit too orange. And if you wanted to add more interest into your dirt areas here, just to add a darker version of your dirt just in spots here and there. Uh, but apart from that. The image looks great. You've done really nice work. And I, I particularly like the sky. I think the sky's looking great. But the, uh, the, the stone, the rock, it looks fine. No, it looks really good. Really nice work. Um, what are you, what's it for, Sniper Echo? Are you just doing it for your portfolio piece? Or are you going to uh, build, do anything with the terrain? You're using UE4, so I'm not sure if you're going to be um, doing a fly-through because uh, the Art Deco building guys that I'm making, I'm going to create a cinematic add uh, similar to the one that you saw in UDK where it flies, the camera flies through the building. We're going to be doing that again in uh, Unreal Engine 4. So we'll go through all the cinematic stuff then. You're quite welcome, Sniper Okay, Thank you very much for showing it to me and for everyone on the stream. Uh, like I said, guys, I love looking at your work. It's why I'm on Twitch. It's... Uh, 
I love looking at the work that you guys do. And it doesn't have to be great work like uh, Sniper Echo or Nano. It can be any work that you've done. Anything you want an opinion on, uh, anything you just want to show. And like I said, all, all levels. I'm happy to look at everybody's work. Uh, I know everyone has different skill levels. So please don't feel that you have to be, you know, create great work like you see here from Sniper Echo or from Nano. Uh, I'm happy to look at anything. But that, that's looking very nice and uh, Nano's is looking very nice as well.